Welcome to another edition of Pastor Kumui's Illustrations. So they have leadership to in the band. You know at school, you've gone to school yourself. We have leadership. We have the prefects, we have the teachers, we have the headmaster, the principal. And these people are controlled in a particular way. In the army, we have leadership. Everywhere you go, you have leadership. Without that leadership and the leaders having the authority that they ought to have, nothing will move in the world. But understand that many of us, because we're also we're living in the world, we are working in the world, we're relating with the people in the world. And anywhere you, even if you say, well, I'm an illiterate, I'm not working in the office, don't you see that in the market there are leaders and there are their unions? And in their unions, they have their leaders. Don't you see in the farmers' uh, corporation that they have uh, the leaders over those farmers? Any area you are, even villages, don't you have chiefs and leaders in the villages, in the clans, in the tribes? We have leaders. But you see, because we have been living with these people in the world, we know how the natural men and the natural women, how they manifest leadership qualities. But those people are not born again. And therefore, their leadership qualities are generally devoid of the spirit of god and when we are tempted to lead like them when we are tempted to have a leadership roles and functions like the leaders in the world that time we do not mortify the flesh we just go ahead or we say that leadership style is effective when they are constructing the road it's effective in our school system it's effective in the army so if they have those leadership qualities in the army and the leadership qualities in the army is the one that stamps out the course and everything then we can do that no we cannot do that their own success is limited success and their success is filled with a lot of things that if you really examine them everything will fall apart therefore we as christians who have the spirit of God must mortify the deeds of the flesh, the actions and the functions of the natural men in our leadership if we're going to succeed and we're going to have a well done from the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 3, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one says, I'm of Apollos, and another, I'm of, while one says, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Here were Christians at Corinth, and these Christians, obviously, they knew the Lord. And you will see that even in this um, passage, where Paul the Apostle was correcting and rebuking their carnality, telling them that they were not fully yielding to the Spirit in their relationships and reactions together he still accepted that they were christians look at verse one and i brethren you can't use brothers and sisters for sinners i brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in christ they were born again but he told them they were not yielding fully enough to the spirit of god and they had this division and envy among themselves and they would say, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. Well, don't you know if you examine the society, you'll find that that is very common among men. Think about marriage, for example, and you had messages on marriage, on marriage last night. In marriage, um, heads of families, mothers, fathers, will tell their people and their children that we are of, then they mention their tribe or their clan or their little community. Therefore, my daughter, my son, you must not go outside this local boundary to go and marry because we are of this. They are of that. And then from state to state, it's the same thing. That uh, people will say, even if you are going to go a little bit beyond this boundary, we are of this area. They are of that area. You cannot go beyond. That's what they do in the world. The same thing as you look at the various people that are working. You see a lot of discrimination among them. Now, primary school teachers never go along with secondary school teachers because they are not in the same class. They are teachers, they have the same profession, but they are not in the same class. And the secondary school teachers will look at the primary school teachers. They are of that section, lower grade. We are of this. And of course, university lecturers have nothing to do with secondary school teachers. Conferences don't bring them together. Training doesn't bring them together. Nothing brings them together. 
they are of this and we are of that and even when you get to the university the assistant lecturers have nothing to do with the senior lecturers because the assistant lecturers what do they know they are just a little bit above the secondary school teachers it's just that we need all these hands in the laboratory and you know to do the practical that's why they are there and what do the professors have to do with the senior lecturers you see that's what the Paul the apostle was saying that in the societies of men you have this class this class that class and these people now the Corinthians they started the same thing in the church and you might say that was very very bad but how about you that if a particular zona leader is talking oh you say I'm not of that in fact I I crossed over I left that zone because of that man and uh, what a pity now they bring all of us together uh, two districts and I happen to fall into his class when we're going to have another study maybe after this time and um, well I'm very quietly you move away and you say since I moved away from him in that zone I don't want him to have any influence on me if he's the only one that can teach the way into heaven well thank God it's not the only one thank God there are other people and I will go and listen to other I cannot listen to that man I'm not of Apollos, I'm of Paul. Others, I'm not of Paul, I am of Severs. Others, I don't even take the authority of any man. Paul, Apollos, Severs, all I know is Christ. I've been born again by Jesus Christ, and what he tells me to do, I do. All the instruction, information they pass on to people, if it's coming from Apollos, it's a human being. Every human being has imperfection, and I don't follow imperfect people. If it's Paul, every human being has imperfection. I don't follow Paul. If it's Severs, every human being has imperfection. I don't follow Peter. But Jesus Christ, the sinless, the perfect one, he is the one I'm following. Well, that's easy for you because when you are going wrong, you say, well, it's Christ I'm following. If Paul talks to you and says, but uh, brother or sister, why don't you correct this? That's the way you see it but i am listening to christ but you don't pray how can a prayerless man listen to christ a person that is not baptized in the holy ghost is listening he says christ is the one that is listening to a person that if you told him to okay open ezekiel and read and uh, interpret chapter one for us he reads and uh, he says ah all these wheels and flying and all that what does this mean i don't understand how about christ is your leader now and paul can't explain to you apollos cannot explain to you and Sivas cannot explain to you why doesn't that Christ explain everything to you and if we study Exodus chapter uh, 31 to 40 you know all those um, instruments and the tables and the gold and the silver and the sheeting wood and you know the cherubims and everything and we say now since uh, you are not you cannot accept teaching from Apollos or Paul or Sivas now learn it yourself and you read through everything and you say why did they write all this in the Bible I don't understand this how about Christ Christ is the only one you are following. Since Christ is the only one you are following, why doesn't he teach you? He has given you leaders. He said some in the church. First, apostle. Secondly, prophets. Then, teachers. And then, after that, he, gets us, he gives us a list of other leaders. But you see, the Corinthian church, they are divided into little, little bits. I am of this. I am of that. I am not there. I'm only here. And Paul the Apostle told them they were walking as men. They were not yielding to the Spirit anymore. And so in our own leadership too, in the zones, in the area, and in the house fellowship, there are times that though you are born again, there's no doubt about that. If you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, yet you are not yielding fully to the Spirit of God. Now what do we learn of the qualities of those leaders that are Spirit-filled, Spirit-controlled, spirit directed the greatest example we have is the example of our lord jesus christ let's look at chapter 3 of john john chapter 3 verse 34 for he whom god has whom god has sent speaketh the words of god for god giveth not the spirit by measure unto him that means the lord has given the spirit without measure unto him and he is the one that was always led of the spirit influenced of the spirit directed of the spirit he said i do nothing of myself as the father has taught me even so do i these things and he did everything that pleased the father every time how did he do it by the leading of the spirit of god by the leading of the spirit of god and in luke chapter 22 
from verse 25 and he said unto them the kings of the gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors but ye shall not be so here the lord told them that there is leadership in the world just like i've been telling you and that these leaders in the world they have a style of leadership and it says it shall not be so among you now you see the difficulties we have is that some of us have been leaders in the world and now we're leaders in the church or some of us are still to the present day leaders in the world as well as leaders in the church and there is the acceptable leadership quality or leadership style in the world and when you're in the world let's say you are working in the bank let's say you are teaching in a school let's say you are working with a construction company and these people you cannot appeal to them through scripture you cannot uh, while you are working in the bank for example you want uh, a typist or want a cashier to do something or to give you a report you cannot go to john and make a quotation to that person and say because of this verse hurry up and give me that assignment tomorrow that will be string to them over there in the secular employment they don't apply the bible like that neither do they apply prayer if you have a problem in the place of work for example you cannot tell the man and say look at this problem that you have now the way to solve this problem is that you should go to the lord in prayer now they don't solve construction problem that way they'll go back to their drawing board and they will find out about the strain and the stress and the quantity um, survey that they had done and everything and see why that thing is failing not that they will go and be praying whereas when you come to the church if you have been a leader in the world and now you are a leader in the church if you are not careful the same thing you are doing over there in the world is the same thing you'll be doing in the church and you'll say that leadership is not strange to me i'm a leader over there in the world and if i get all those people controlled and i get them directed and i do everything that ought to be done why can't i do it here a person may succeed over there in building roads or in teaching in the school or being a principal of a school and come over here in the church and be a total failure because the methods are different the functions are different the way that we're leaders or we apply our leadership qualities in the church they're very very different that's what jesus said jesus said this is how they do it in the world but ye shall not be so and he that is greatest among you let him be as a younger he that is cheap as he that serves that does serve for whether he's greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, it's not he that sitteth at meat but i am among you as he that serveth. Christ has given us the example and you know his own example is the example of perfect spirit-led spirit-controlled spirit-guided leadership I hope you have been blessed by this edition of Pastor Kumui's illustrations please don't let this illustration die pass it on to others and you could be of help to someone somewhere Till we meet next week again for another edition of Pastor Kumui's Illustrations. Remain blessed.